Good morning, everyone. Virgo here. It is the 24th of September. Happy Tuesday to everyone. Today, we're going to be going over background checks on Sharon Tracy Gale and DeCorey Pitts. The reason that we're doing this is because, as you guys know, yesterday I put up a video, and for those of you who have not seen it, it's just yesterday, uh, the first of yesterday's uploads, um, on what the attorneys actually took a look at in order to attempt to try to determine what potentially could be the uh, jail terms that are uh, handed out with regards to the uh, Sharon Tracy Gale and DeCorey Pitts dockets. And so one of the things that pertains to or that they look at uh, when handing out sentences is the background. So we're going to be looking at um, some backgrounds on both of these individuals. So the first one we're going to look at is Sharon Tracy Gale. Now, you'll see that there's something interesting already. You will see that down here it says otherwise known as Sharon Tracy, T-R-A-C-E-Y, Gale. But her given name is Sharon Traquet Gale. I found that to be interesting and thought I would point it out. It may be pronounced differently than Traquet, but um, maybe Trace. I'm not sure, but I found that to be interesting. So let's go ahead and get into um, this background check. I think you're going to find it interesting. Okay, so the very first thing we're actually looking at is her age and her date of birth, which has been confirmed just based on her own Facebook page. So we're looking at um, her, what's considered timeline or personal uh, information and of course her social security number is not showing but her state the state where her social security number was issued along with the year that it was issued in previous employment which I'm not going to sit on for any length of time because I do believe that there are certain things that really need to kind of remain um, you know not in the public's hands. Okay, so Joanne Ann Schofield, that is her sister. I was able to confirm that based on this particular report. So that information that we got with regards to the posts that her sister was speaking out against the uh, Moorish American Consulate, that is actually her sister's name. All right, next we are going to go down to criminal records. So we're going to take a look at that because that's really what we're here for. We're not really here to uh, pry into any other personal stuff. All right, this is all public records, you guys, just so that you know. Um, anytime that you have a criminal record, it is public. So uh, this is not violating privacy um, uh, YouTube standards because of the fact that all of this information is actually public in the courts right now and everyone has been researching it. So we're going to take a look at some of the offenses, and we're going to notice here that um, the first one that shows up is an offense from June 26, 2017. It has to do with operating a vehicle without a valid inspection sticker. Um, not any big deal, obviously. Then we come down here to November 19, 2017. Evidence of emission inspection, operating a vehicle without required financial responsibility, so that means no insurance. Um driving an unregistered vehicle. So again, a lot of the time you see these groups, they run around, they make their own license plates, they don't get insurance. Um, they basically hold no responsibility whatsoever. Uh, they are um, not willing to get their vehicles inspected. They're not willing to have a driver's license or they, or even better, they turn their driver's licenses in um, and state that they don't have to have them anymore and try to use a Moorish nationality card, which never ends up working. But regardless, um, going down here a little bit further, we will see that um, there is an offense here from March 25th, 2019, which is risking catastrophe. As we know, that's what we've been searching uh, through the dockets for recently. Uh, endangering the welfare of children as a parent or guardian. 
um, and recklessly endangering another person. So all of these are within the Pennsylvania courts. Now there are some unlikely records here. And what that means is that um, every once in a while, there is uh, there are records that will show up that are related to a specific individual, and you actually have to go through the courts in order to pick these out and determine whether they are the appropriate person or not. And so on a background check, they'll say, you know, these are less likely or unlikely to be related, but we have the same name here, and we have the same location, and if there's nobody else with that name, that it's possible that they were using an alias, and in Sharon's case, of course, we know that's possible because she's using an alias right now. Um, so we'll just look through these, although, you know, again, these are not important enough for me to actually go through and try to determine based on the courts whether or not these really belong to her. These are largely um, very minor traffic violations, um, illegal parking where official sign prohibits, exceeding parking meter regulations, uh, again, illegal parking were official sign. So again, these are like parking meter things and, um, you know, uh, again, evidence of emission inspection. I'd be inclined to think that probably is hers simply because she already has one. Um, driving an unregistered vehicle, that's probably hers. Operating a vehicle without a required financial responsibility statement, which of course is no insurance, that's probably hers. Um, you know, all of these things are traffic related with the exception of the March 25th stuff. So I can already tell you that three of these things are definitely hers because they're you know, we've already seen them up above, but that's really all we're dealing with re with regards to Sharon. We are really only dealing with traffic violations. And even if they spilled over like this one right here did to a criminal area uh, due to the fact that she was resisting arrest or something of that sort, really, they're not serious enough for it to waver, um, you know, they're, the the prosecutor and the judge are not going to look at this and go, oh, well, this is a dangerous criminal, so therefore we're going to amp up the charges. No, we're going to be pretty much looking at somebody who basically is uh, pretty clean in the past, and they're probably not going to hold her past against her very much. So that's Sharon. Now, let's take a look at the other party, and this is important for Sharon also. And the reason why is because, remember, there are several conspiracy charges in here. This other party, to Corey Pitts, is someone she was living with in the home, and that is the other party being charged with conspiracy. Also, um, conspiracy of risking a catastrophe, conspiracy to endanger children, conspiracy to endanger other parties. It's important. It's important. For the grand scheme of things, we need to look at both. So here we go. Okay, so here we are over on DeCorey, Christopher Pitts, he's 42. Again, you see the correct address here. We know we've got the right person. And here is some personal information here. Uh, September of 1977, we see the appropriate pictures that look like him. Now, interestingly, something I did not share with you with regards to Sharon. Sharon actually has a couple of other identities that we did not know about. One of them is the identity of a Facebook page with the picture of a Caucasian woman on it. I might go into that on another video, but for right now, um, we know we have the right person based on the charges that are in there and the fact that we can find those on the docket. So I'm not going to go too much into that. I'm going to stick to the subject, but just so that you know, there's some other stuff that's going on on the side with Miss Sharon Tracy Gale. All right, here we go um, with DeCorey Christopher Pitts. These are indeed pictures that match his mugshot. Um, and uh, let's see, we've got, oh, let me go down here to criminal records. Let's take a look at this. So we have five records that are um, matching this individual. All right. And we actually have more than that that are matching this individual because this one I did do extra research on. And the reason why is because I knew for a fact already that this person had been tried on a murder charge. So I went in and made sure that I um, looked at all of the um, possible and unlikely charges that are on here to ensure that I was accurate 
with what he had actually been charged with. All right, here we go. Driving while operating private, suspended, or revoked license. Um, driving unregistered vehicle, operating a vehicle without a valid inspection. Again, we're looking at the same kind of stuff. And here we go. Possession of a firearm that is prohibited, risking catastrophe, endangering welfare of children, as a parent, guardian, or other commits uh, offense, recklessly endangering another person. So as you see, March 25th, same thing as with Sharon's. We've got the right people for sure. Um, so we know we're looking at the right background. And we are also dealing with some of the same stuff with the automobile, which makes sense because I'm sure that they were sharing the same automobiles, being that they lived together and have children together, or at least a child together that I'm aware of. Um, evidence of a emission inspection, unregistered vehicle, operating a vehicle without a valid inspection, driving while um, suspended or revoked license. Okay, we're going to continue to go down here. Now, um, the ones that I'm going to read off to you, these specific records are ones that I have personally checked into with the courts to ensure that this was the appropriate person. All right, this person actually has quite a few, just so that you know, aliases. And I believe that is the reason why there is missing information in here. All right, but these were, I was able to actually find court documents on. So October 1st, 2003, theft by unlawful taking movable property, and trespassing. He was tried May 29th, 1999 for murder, carrying firearms without a license, carrying firearms on a public street or place, and possessing instruments of crime. Now, let's talk about this for just a minute, because one of the reasons why DeCorey's not allowed to be in the vicinity of any firearms is because of a couple of these um, charges that we're looking at right now. All right, um, control and confinement, failure to clean up dog feces and vaccination required. So that had something to do with the dogs. Um, Department of Corrections, because of course he was in prison before for a violent crime for a gun-related issue. And so this is the reason why there's an additional charge with regards to firearms on DeCorey Pitts. Riding in a vehicle knowing it's taken without consent of owner. So technically, that would be like joyriding, okay? But really, it's just theft. Um, and that was in New Jersey. All right, we also have a couple of burglary things on here from 2003. Again, <laughs> we're dealing with a scenario that is a lot more serious than what we were talking about with Sharon. Um, and then, of course, we start going into the stuff we recognize here, which is, of course, um, the same as uh, with Sharon driving while operating, uh, you know, on a his was revoked license um and then we also have the the march 25th recklessly endangering another person and these are all separated out for him so when we're looking at this the reason why i'm making mention of decorys as much or more than sharon's is because i think a lot of people are going to be very curious in terms of what the court is going to look at for each person we have a tendency i think sometimes when we're going over this stuff to actually forget we're dealing with not just one party in this case we're dealing with two and um one of the reasons why decory pitt's actual um bail was set at such a high amount being two hundred and fifty thousand dollars to begin with and then was um the financial uh, it was it was lowered we'll say uh down to a hundred and fifty thousand dollars after a, a motion was filed as a request to please lower it some so they could try to find a way to get him out which they never did he's been incarcerated the entire time um but one of the reasons why it was set so high were because of these outstanding charges and prior, uh, prior, prior to this being put in 
um, prison for a good length of time. So we are dealing with somebody who has a serious criminal record into Corey Pitts, and that could affect the entire case. So this was just an update for you guys who were asking about previous criminal records and what the history was on these individuals. So I hope this helps, and I hope everybody has a wonderful day. If you have questions, please put them in the comments, or as always, you can email me at virgotriad at protonmail.com. Thanks a lot, you guys.